This is AI for SMB, the podcast that helps small businesses navigate the world of artificial intelligence. We explore the possibilities of AI and how this emerging technology can enhance the productivity and potential of your organization. In this second series of episodes, we examine the successful adoption of Microsoft 365 Copilot and how a partner like Clear Concepts can help you along the way. All right, welcome to or welcome back to AI for SMB, the podcast that is designed. Ah, we're just having a good time. We're talking about AI. My name is Ryan Bialik, joined as always by the brains and the brawn, Kyle Braun. Kyle, how are you doing? Hey, Ryan, I'm doing great. Fantastic. All right, so this is episode three in our series two. If you're just joining us, uh, again, you're going to want to check out uh, episode one and two of this series. We are breaking down Microsoft 365 Copilot adoption in this series. So this is that paid for product. This is that Copilot in your Excel, in your Word, in your Outlook, in your PowerPoint, in your Teams. I can go on and on but we only have so much time together. So uh, today's episode or today's focus is user readiness. So we've talked about uh, an organization readiness. Today, we're going to move into user readiness. Yes, absolutely, Ryan. Um, super excited about this topic. But before we dive into it, um, just want to throw up a little disclaimer here. And that's, hey, don't skip that cr- crawling with AI step. That's super important. Um, you definitely want to set up that that AI foundation here before diving into these more sophisticated products. You know, like when we're talking about a Microsoft 365 Copilot, the barrier to entry is a little bit higher. Um, the expectation is that you're a little more familiar with AI and how to interact with these AI chatbots. So it's really good to take your time, uh, explore those entry level uh, free off the shelf products like a Microsoft Copilot uh, before diving into that M365 Copilot. Right on. And I think it's important to uh, go back to last episode and re-listen to the section where we talked about closing your eyes, not while you're driving. And if you're driving again, don't do that. Um, just imagining though your business as a, as a heat map. Think of the layout of your operations or think of your org chart, if you will. And you know that there's going to be a hot spots where AI and generative AI and co-pilot are going to make the highest difference and therefore give you the best return on investment. So keep that in mind because that's going to help you prioritize training and what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, totally. Uh, Training, so important. And it's really good. I mean, there's tons of resources online. Um, You can definitely, you know, pursue kind of a learn at your own pace approach. Um, that's totally fine. But there's also partners out there like, like, like Clear Concepts who offers some great training programs to help you, uh, you know, get started and then develop and advance your AI competencies within your organization. Um, our, our colleague Don puts on a great Copilot 101 training course um, that really goes through the basics. We start off uh, talking about Microsoft Copilot. Again, that's that entry level product. And go through what it is and how to access it and and some of the th- the benefits to using uh, that program. We also compare it to some of the other chat uh, offerings out there. Um, so it's a really robust training program um, to gauge in. But uh, really, I think the core, maybe the maybe the most important part of that that session is really really the prompt engineering training. This is such an important um, skill and muscle skill or muscle to start building up as you start thinking about AI and and interacting with AI chatbots uh, specifically. Um, so defined um, uh, prompt engineering, and you know, we've covered this before, but let's just review this quickly here. Prompt engineering is the process of designing and crafting the input that you provide to your AI chatbots. So within our Copilot 101 training course, we cover seven of the most impactful uh, prompt engineering techniques. Um, Don goes deep into each of these and provides examples and really walks you through um, how to uh, employ them uh, within your interactions to AI. And uh, so we'll just cover them here briefly. Uh, The first one is, you know, to be specific and descriptive um, in your prompts, include contextual clues um, to ensure that you get an appropriate customized response uh, from your AI chatbot. 
Also really important to double down and reiterate yourself um, to make sure you're getting your point across to the AI. Um, order is super important. The sequence in which you structure uh, your prompt to the AI chatbot is important. You want to have those instructions first and the content second. Um, giving the model an out also very important and could be helpful to help uh, proactively address model hallucinations. The chain of thought prompting technique uh, gives you a look under the hood as to what the AI model is doing um, and gives its kind of chain of thought, so to speak, and, and helps you understand how it came to come to its answer. Specifying the format uh, of the intended output from the AI chatbot can be important. Um, AI chatbots are really adaptable uh, in terms of different formatting um, that, and, and, and different levels of formality uh, that you're looking for. Um, so whether it be a professional tone or a casual tone, and if the format is, uh, if you're looking for a point form, paragraph form, even tabular form, um, the AI chatbots are generally able to accommodate those requests. And then lastly, we suggest uh, where applicable, uh, providing examples of the types of output that you're looking for. Right on, such a critical step understanding that prompt engineering and and you know our apology our apologies if we sound like a broken record on this topic but so fundamental so important whether your destination is a custom chatbot or it's off the shelf products that are free like gpt um, like copilot from microsoft or you know paid products like microsoft 365 copilot or gpt pro and those types of of solutions as well solid prompt engineering skills is going to pay massive dividends as you incorporate these tools in uh, in the day-to-day. -day. So again, a, f a, a very solid first step worth repeating here in the, in the case of M365 Copilot adoption. And my only sort of disclaimer there is, is not necessarily as a, a shameless plug, but it is. Uh, certainly we do this level of training here at Clear Concepts. It's available uh, to our customers and to new customers. Um, if you are looking elsewhere for training, here's my, my tip, is look for a trainer that's going to tailor the training to you and to your organization. Whether you're in manufacturing or retail or professional services or financial services, again, the, the best trainers uh, that are worth their weight in salt are going to take prompt engineering training, they're going to take this co-pilot training, and they're going to tailor it to your day-to-day. So just a helpful tip if you're looking out there for, for training. A lot of generic stuff exists in the world, and, and certainly you know on, on YouTube and the like, a lot of very, very generic stuff. Yeah, that's a great point, Ryan. I think the, the use cases of these AI platforms really varies depending upon, I think, A, your industry, and B, your department within your organization. So it's good to, I think, reach out to an organization that can really customize that training profile to meet your exact needs. Right on. Now moving to moving to a second step um, is getting a little bit more product specific. So so far we've been again generic to copilots as a whole, generic to chat and generative AI as a whole, but finding some training that is specific to Microsoft 365 Copilot, and again um, utilizing that training on your heat map. Right. So the hottest spots first. Those should be the users, teams, departments, which have you. Uh, that receive that level of training. And training on Microsoft 365 Copilot is a little bit of a different animal. It's almost as if uh, we need to borrow from the same playbook of training for just generally the Microsoft 365 suite. There's so many different applications in that suite. And with M365 Copilot, there's Copilots in so many of those different applications as well. And they all behave a little bit differently. They all have a little bit different use cases. Sometimes finding them or finding a good use case uh, is a bit of a struggle. So focus on training around scenarios, what to use, when to use it, where it's available. Uh, this is half inspiration and half instruction. You've probably uh, heard me say that before. Uh, but again, it's knowing where Copilot is tucked in today in which applications. Um, trust me, if you get a license assigned to you and you open up PowerPoint, it's gonna get in your face about Copilot. If you have the license assigned and you go into uh, Microsoft Forms or you go into the Viva Suite, trust me, it's not gonna let you forget that you can use a Copilot in those applications. But again, good training to shore up where it's available, 
what it can do in those uh, specific applications, like writing a formula in Excel, like summarizing a document in Word, like helping you uh, summarize a meeting or a channel conversation in Teams. So get that awareness of the scenarios is very, very important. Uh, again, short of the applications, just bashing you over the head with, hey, there's a co-pilot here now. And being very, very excited about what's coming in the future. Again, I think we talked about that last episode with a new feature. So Copilot coming to OneDrive, Copilot coming to different places in SharePoint, and, and again, the Viva Suite. So uh, half inspiration, this is what you can do, and where to do it, and sort of why. And then the instruction side is, is again, getting your hands dirty with some, some real life scenarios in those applications. Yeah, that's that's great, Ryan. Um, yeah, like you mentioned, there's you know there's that formalized training um, offered uh, you know by Clear Concepts or other organizations for 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 very product specific uh, enablement. There, there's also again a ton of online resources as well. Um, so I like to just call those out here um, in, as part of this conversation. Um, there's there's this uh, Microsoft Copilot Scenario Library. So this is kind of a kind of a department by department. Um, resource that Microsoft's put together um, to help, you know, again, specific departments uh, isolate different use cases of the Microsoft 365 Copilot. So we've been kind of going through this. It's, it's really neat. Um, some some of the uh, some of the use cases highlighted here. Um, so there's uh, it's kind of split out by department. Um, so there's there's finance, human resources, uh, IT, information technology, marketing, and sales. So there's quite a bit of uh, different use cases here. Again, use cases really dependent on the department you're in and the industry you're in. So I just wanted to walk through maybe one one use case here for one specific department, just to kind of give you a flavor of of the content that's provided here. Uh, so I've opened up the HR, the Human Resources uh, Department guidance, and I want to look at this augmented hiring workflow. This is kind of neat because it involves quite a few different Microsoft 365 applications. Well, I thought it might be good to kind of demonstrate uh, using this specific application. So put your mind, uh, put your mind, put your put your HR hat on and let's imagine you're you're involved with with hiring um, a new individual. There's a new role that's been opened up in your organization and you have a, a hiring workflow uh, that needs to take place. And I want to kind of demonstrate how Microsoft 365 Copilot can kind of augment that, that workflow and, and make things a little bit easier uh, for you. So this workflow um, could start with you know, creating a job description, right? Generally, you want to outline um, the, the skills, the qualifications, and responsibilities associated with that new role. And here, you can leverage Copilot and Word. Um, we, we know that uh, Copilot is really good with coming up with new and novel written content. So uh, it'd be great to you know reach out to Copilot and Word and say, hey, you know, here's my here's my new role. Maybe give the role title. Uh, maybe give the industry you're in as well to provide a little more context. Remember, let's go back to that prompt engineering uh, we spoke about earlier. Put those details in and, and see what it spits out. Um, will it will it be exactly what you're looking for? Uh, perhaps or perhaps not. But hey, again, if it gets you 60, 70 percent of the way there, um, that's still a big time savings. Uh, another option here is that you could, let's say you have a job description that you've created previously for another role, you can also ingest that Word file right into the prompt in Copilot in Word. And you could say, hey, here is you know, kind of our format for job descriptions in our organization. You know, can you create something that looks and feels similar to what we've created previously? Um, so kind of maintaining that, that formatting and whatnot. So, so Copilot in Word uh, for creating that job description, really helpful for A, getting the content in, and B, getting the formatting right. Next, um, you're gonna want to um, you know, post that job description somewhere, uh, likely online. Um, and then over time, you'll be getting some candidates that'll come in and apply uh, to that job. And here, uh, Copilot helps with kind of assessing those applications as well. Now that you have this job description written, you can then compare these resumes, these applications that are coming in, compare them to that original job description that you and Copilot created previously. So again, do you wanna 
outsource your hiring decisions to Copilot? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, that would be kind of scary, but um, it definitely you know it can be helpful having that first pass at these at these resumes. Maybe maybe itemizing them um, in terms of uh, their match with the with the requirements for the job, and at least you know maybe maybe knocking out the bottom twenty percent. Um, you know again saves you a ton of time. So um, using Copilot to uh, isolate qualified candidates would be step two. Step three, uh, once you have your short list of candidates, you're going to obviously want to interview them. Um, and again, this is where uh, Copilot and Work come in handy. Uh, you can get those interview questions, start ideating on those to make sure uh, you're asking the right questions. Um, again, it might not be exactly what you're looking for, but if it gets you close, uh, maybe with a few tweaks, you'll have your set of inter interview questions ready to go. And so once you have your short list of candidates and your interview questions, it's time to conduct that interview. And uh, more often, more often than not these days, these interviews are taking a place online through a place through a through a platform like Microsoft Teams. And this is where Copilot and Teams can really come in handy. Um, the uh, Copilot and Teams will will you know transcribe that entire meeting, uh, provide a summary of that meeting, and key take key takeaways. So this can be really helpful, and then uh, for for an, in, can be really helpful in terms of assessing and reviewing that interview after it's taken place. And again, you can bring in that job description um, and ask, okay, hey, how did this how did this candidate perform relative to the job description we created earlier? So again, helping you to again review that interview, um, maybe pass along some notes to another colleague, and then evaluate uh, that interview uh, and. and in comparison to the, the the job description we created previously, um, next step is creating the offer letter. So again, we can go back into Copilot for Word, um, set up that offer letter, uh, customized uh, to to the exact job role that we outlined earlier. Um, and again, if you have an existing offer letter, you can bring that in to your prompt within Copilot for Word. And then lastly, uh, you'll be wanting to create some onboarding materials for that new hire. And this is where Copilot and PowerPoint can really come in handy, creating a nice visual uh, document or presentation to uh, onboard that new, that new personnel. So um, in a nutshell, this is you know, kind of the, the process, the, the hiring workflow um, that would take place for, for an HR professional for a new role in an organization. And we've kind of highlighted here um, how Copilot could kind of assist and augment all the different steps along the way. And, and that scenario library, um, Copilot Lab from, from Microsoft, is, is brilliant because it's giving you role-based or departmental-based use cases for Copilot across a broad set of procedures or steps in, in someone's day-to-day. -day. So I love it for that. But then again, as, as you've described here, Kyle, it's going in granular and saying, try this in Word, try this in PowerPoint try this in you know teams for meetings and recaps and everything so it's, it's almost like a sampler platter of uh, of ideas and inspiration for somebody to use uh, Microsoft 365 copilot and again it's, it's just putting it in a language it's just putting it in a framework or it's just putting it in the day-to-day -day, uh, which makes it a lot more I think useful than again just watching some of those very very generic or more marketing uh, style uh, 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 content out there on the web. So we'll get some links in the show notes to uh, to the scenario library and to the Copilot Lab. Uh, they, I think they also double down on on prompting and some of the some samples of different prompts that work. You know, some prompts are going to work really really good in Excel. They're going to fall flat in Word. Some prompts are going to work really really well in Teams, but have generally no effect in say something like PowerPoint. So knowing what you're trying to do, matching that to the right application. Uh, again, if it's one of those apps that's been in office forever and ever, um, that's good. You, sh you should have a sort of a shortcut to understanding to what Word and Excel and PowerPoint do. Uh, but if you're newer to Teams, if you're newer to uh, some of the other applications where Copilot is being uh, bolted onto, uh, it's, it's going to be great to see what you can do with Copilot. Absolutely. And then our last kind of recommendation here to round out the user readiness portion uh, of uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot readiness um, is to create a Copilot user group of some variety. 
So at this point, uh, you would have identified a, a short list of users that uh, might make the most out of uh, this type of platform. And, and they've had some experience with it and used it um, day to day. Now it's time to get them together on a, on a reoccurring basis and to discuss um, their thoughts on the platform, maybe some surprising um, elements of it, some use cases they, uh, they discovered when going through it, maybe some disappointments with it, um, what have you. Going through kind of their experience uh, with the platform can be really helpful and could be a really meaningful discussion to help others ideate on different use cases of it. For sure. I think different businesses, different organizations are going to have a different timeline for Microsoft 365 Copilot, sort of that AI journey. Uh, and if you recall last episode or the episode before, we talked about this idea of just licensing, you know, just subscribing a few users at a time, maybe one whole team or uh, a small section of a, of a larger department, and let them use Copilot for three or four months. And then you know, swap those licenses out to a different group of users. Uh, the advice here back to our Copilot user group, you know, build something on Teams, add everybody in, uh, give every, everybody sort of that, that central plaza to come and share, uh, take screenshots of, again, the wins and the losses, the surprises and the disappointments. Uh, and again, we also talked about, uh, you know, an AI committee comprising of, you know, maybe people that are very, very into the tech and maybe some devil's advocates. Same deal here in, in your user group is have those that are completely smitten by the product, but also have the people that are maybe less than impressed or struggling to find ways to incorporate Copilot in their day to day. Uh, that, that sort of sharing is caring mantras is going to fit here uh, and awareness of, hey, I used it over here in this particular use case. Oh, I never thought about that. Let me try it over here in my department or in this particular use case. So if you store it all in a team, maybe in a team channel, something like that, uh, again, you're going to have that chronology. You're going to have that all uh, as that user group changes, as the subscriptions get reassigned. Uh, again, you can go sort of back in time and see what your colleagues have, have experienced. Ask questions of your colleagues that maybe were, uh, were part of the user group before you were. Um, I think doing it in Teams is great. Bonus points if at some point you use Copilot to summarize all of the Copilot user group chatter on a Teams channel, for example. So bonus points there. Um, and just to sort of round this, this one out, uh, again, tons of great resources out there uh, when it comes to user readiness. We, we know. We know. Take it from us. Uh, I've got the scar tissue to prove it that, that really driving awareness, driving acceptance, driving accessibility, finding these things is, is job one, and then using them is really job two. Um, this is really key to any software change. Um, you know, doubly so in this AI age where things are changing every 16 minutes. Uh, it's such a different pace even from uh, COVID and work from home and hybrid collaboration a few years ago. Probably even a bigger, more monumental change than cloud files and really cloud collaboration was, I don't know, that feels like eight or nine years ago that that, that was the thing. Uh, this is changing so fast. It has the potential to change work lives so drastically. Uh, you can't ignore it. You got to get on it. And again, a solid user readiness strategy, a solid training plan, and helping your users find it and find good ways to use it. Match that up with, again, that, that heat map of where you're going to get the highest uh, initial return on investment, because these subscriptions are not cheap. We know that. You're going to want to get that bang for your buck, and this all folds in together. So, Mr. Braun. Another solid uh, episode of AI for SMB is in the can. We've got one more episode left in this series. Uh, so I do hope you uh, listeners join us for our next episode, which is going to be about data readiness. And you all should see the smile on Kyle Braun's face. He is excited for this one. This is my bread and butter. So I'm uh, really, really excited to talk about it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. And we hope to see you on the next episode of AI for SMB.